What's the worst client you've ever worked with? <laughs> You're in for a treat, my friend. So, if you're new to the channel, welcome. I'm Scott, I'm the owner of Lancaster Academy. I teach freelancers, designers, how to make more money, do better, do better design, etc., etc. Now, in this video, we're gonna be talking about the worst client I have ever worked with. And I've been doing this for 10 years, and th this client takes the, like, takes the top spot, and there's no second and third place. They take every spot. It was the worst experience ever, genuinely. I would genuinely rather walk over broken glass whilst listening to One Direction. Actually, One Direction is a little bit harsh. Whilst listening to Keisha, oh my God, oh my God, definitely. Keisha with my hair on fire, then work with this client ever again. So let's dive into the story. And at the end of the video, I'll kind of tell you a little bit about how I made sure that I never have this experience again, no matter which client I work with and a couple of other lessons along the way. Now, how did it all start? It all started with a client getting in touch with me via LinkedIn. He had seen my work, he really liked some of the brand names and the branding that we'd done on the website and he'd read one of my articles and it all started very well. Everything was perfect, okay? Very rosy, I was very excited to work with him. Where did it all go wrong? When we actually started working together, a couple of red flags popped up. Now, if you're a designer and you've worked with some clients over the years, then you will know what these red flags are. Little red flags such as, hmm, how many revisions are included in this package? Um, uh, I, I'll know exactly what it is that I want when I see it. Or I've worked with a couple of designers in the past and they just, they just couldn't get me. They just don't understand what I'm looking for. They were all rubbish. Now, that very well could be the case. They could all be all rubbish. But those things are generally telltale signs of a client that hasn't just been extremely unlucky working with tons of bad designers because that's very unlikely, especially if you're paying a good amount of money. Generally, designers are quite good if you're paying, you know, a fair, a fair wage for the actual project. But to get unlucky like two, three times in a row, you start to have to kind of look at yourself and realize that mm, you just are maybe not following their process or whatever. Anyway, I didn't make any judgments at the time because I didn't know any better. This was like eight years ago, right? When I was kind of still fresh in the pool, so to speak. Now everything started to unravel when we sent him the questions that we send every client that we work with. Questions that are essentially allowing us to understand what we need to do in regards to the project. So questions like who are your competition, you know, who are your target audience, so we can learn about, you know, how we need to communicate to help him stand out, to help his brand connect with the target audience, etc., etc. Simple stuff. So instead of getting the answers back for the questions, instead I got an email from him saying, "This isn't a pop quiz. This is a design project. Please start the project." I'm literally getting goosebumps now, just thinking about it. I was pretty angry. Okay, back to the story. So when I got that email, I should have insisted that he answer the questions, but I was stupid and I didn't. And I basically just did what he said because I'm a designer. That's what I do. Obviously I just do what I'm told. At least I did then. Now when we start the project, we obviously send some initial designs, which were so far off the mark because he didn't answer the questions. That was my fault. But then what he said afterwards was kind of the beginning of the end, which is pretty much every single designer's worst nightmare. So after we'd spent pretty much all of our time on the initial designs, he sends an email back saying, Scott, these designs are completely terrible. My 10 year old son could have done better on Microsoft Paint. Please issue a full refund and also this is the best part. I require full access and usage to all the designs that you've created and sent me. So let me get this straight, okay? You think the designs are completely useless. In, in fact, you think that your 10 year old son could do better on Microsoft Paint, which could very well be the case. But the last part was the little icing on the cake, the cherry on the top. You think all of the designs are useless but you also want the intellectual property and rights to use them. What? Now, at this point, I felt pretty terrible, right? I'm not gonna lie. I did not sleep for like three days, um, wondering like, how do I actually reply to this gentleman? Um, 
it was a tough time. It was a steep learning curve. And because I'd only getting paid 50% up front, you know, if, if, if I'd spent two weeks on these designs, so I would have literally have wasted like two weeks worth of time for the 50% which he wanted back. And then he also wanted access to the designs to actually use them. I was like, you know, what do I actually do here? This is, this is pretty crazy. Now, the worst thing was, is he actually paid me via PayPal. So if I didn't issue a refund, then he was essentially just going to dispute the claim and then it was just going to take forever to actually get resolved. And, you know, I, I might actually not get any of the money. Like I might actually just have to just refund them and then just, you know, cut my losses and just, you know, make sure that I make them answer the questions in future. And at the time I wasn't even getting people to sign agreements or, you know, kind of contracts, which was another mistake my end. But it doesn't excuse the fact that he did try to steal work from me at the time. And again, this was a long time ago and our processes have changed massively since then, but it was still just really disrespectful and rude. And I think that's the thing that actually hurts designers the most is when they're disrespected and their work isn't valued and their time isn't valued. It's fine if a client says, oh, you know, the work isn't to my liking, this is what I would change or this is my feedback then use your expertise to do, you know, what you think's best and suggest some, some alternatives. But to say that the work is, is, is stupid and be disrespectful and then ask to use it, that was like, that, that honestly was like a huge turning point for me as a designer and in regards to refining my processes. Now, how did I deal with it? Now, because he'd pay via PayPal, I could have just refunded him, but I chose not to because I'd spent two weeks on the project and I felt, if he just said, listen, Scott, this isn't working out and just been really respectful about it, I would have just returned him the money and just said, listen, like, cut our losses. I should have got you to answer the questions. But the reality is he wasn't. He was he was extremely rude. And between the time of him emailing me and me emailing him back a couple of days later because I wanted to take some time to, you know, ask friends what to do and, and to, you know, kind of figure out how I wanted to approach this because I've never dealt with this before. He had emailed me multiple times over those few days basically insulting me and just telling me that he was gonna, you know, take me to court and all that stuff for the money. And I just thought, do you know what it is? I'm gonna have to refund him anyway, if he's right. Why don't we just dispute it via PayPal and let them figure it out? They can actually be the third party that disputes, you know, whether he gets the full amount back or I keep it. That sounds fair. So I basically emailed him that. I said, listen, this is a situation. I've presented the initial designs. I don't really appreciate the fact that you are being extremely disrespectful and unprofessional. I'm trying my best to help you and to offer the best service possible. If you're not happy with the service, then we can refine things and we can go through things and discuss them together. You can book a call anytime. But what I'm not going to do is I'm not going to continue this engagement if you're going to be disrespectful and if you're going to insult me. That's just not going to happen. So anyway, to cut a long story short, he disputed the payment and we ended up in this 90 day free for all of you know providing evidence and then basically seeing who ended up with the money, right? So after 90 days and many more emails of him basically just insulting me and giving me a hard time, I ended up getting an email from PayPal. And thankfully, thank you, I ended up getting the full payment back simply because, and a little lesson here for anyone who does require um, to use PayPal for their payments, only because I provided more evidence than him that I had provided the work, that he had paid for that work, and thankfully we had the agreement via email so we didn't actually need a contract for this particular situation thankfully but then after he had got back to me he didn't want to refine the project or the process this is something that if you buy anything from paypal like a service like a digital service or a design service as long as you're happy to refine the project with them they can't really ask for a refund it's just the way it goes it's like a credit card if, if you said, no, listen, I'm not working on the project anymore, then you would probably have to give a refund back. But if you're like still engaged in the service and you're still happy to work with them and find a solution and to resolve the situation, that's different. They can't actually ask for a refund in that particular circumstance legally, at least from my understanding of what PayPal told me at the time. And this was again, around seven years ago, so I'm not sure if anything's changed, but just to give a little bit of context. So what have I learned from this to make sure this never happens again? Well, the first thing that I do is I do not work on any projects until two things happen. Number one, payment in full upfront. And there's only very specific circumstances, like for example, if we're working on like a 20 k website, which, you know, is, is a significant amount of money, especially for, you know, a medium sized to small business. 
If it's a larger business, they just generally pay up front or they pay in 30 days or whatever, and that payment's gonna be released before we actually give them the, the asset. But every single other project under that amount is basically just paid up front because I don't care if I actually lose clients based on not being paid up front. I would rather be paid up front and be able to focus fully on the work rather than worry about the other 50% not being paid after I've delivered the work simply because the client wants to be an asshole. That isn't going to fly with me. I, I, I personally lose a lot of sleep, um, like just worrying if someone's going to actually pay me or not. So I would just rather completely take that out of the equation and just focus on the clients that will, which, which are willing to pay me up front for the service that I'm going to provide. So that's the, that's the first thing. The second thing is if they don't answer the requirements, if they don't answer the questions, then I'm, we don't start the process. The process only starts when we answer the questions, well, everything's paid up front, then they answer the questions fully, and if I have any further questions, and I'll send it to them after I review their requirements, and then after the requirements are sent, then we also have a Zoom call to discuss their personal preferences, because with design, and especially when you're working with clients, the biggest hurdles are usually when the person's personal preference isn't met. So if you can discuss that on an actual call, two things happen. One, you develop a little bit more rapport with the actual person so they feel like they're actually part of the, the, the project with you and they're not just being dictated to and given a couple of options. They actually feel part of the design process. And secondly, it helps you to understand the differences between what you actually think might be best for the business and the brand and the work and the result and what they think. So you can actually hash those out now before the design process and you waste a ton of time or use a ton of time, should I say, instead of you know, going through the entire design process and then them saying, ah, this didn't really, this isn't really to my, to my personal preference. I don't really like it very much and I don't know why. Why didn't you have that conversation before? It makes a ton of sense. And by doing this, I've literally, you know, got to a point, touch wood, where I don't really have that problem anymore. I, honestly, like I've never actually had a single case in the last six years where a client has literally sent me back an email or a, a response as bad as that, where they've said, I don't like anything, it's, it's completely ridiculous, my 10 year old son is like Da Vinci and he can do all of this and he can do it better than you in Microsoft Paint. It just never happened and it's because of having that process in place. So that's the thing that I learned more than anything. And that's, if anyone starts to lean out of that process and starts to, you know, maybe not answer the questions properly or not follow the process in any way, shape or form, then we don't work with them because it's not worth our time and energy. That was 90 days of not being paid for work that we'd already done. And we also should have got an extra 50% as well. Um, and I also think as well that he actually ended up using a logo which was very similar to one that we designed just with a few little tweaks, which is annoying, but nevertheless, it's, it is what it is. Always make sure that you follow your process and refine your process over time. You won't get them perfect at the start, but make sure you refine your process if you're coming against the same hurdles again and again and again. And this is actually one of the things which we teach in the, the Fiverr Pro Bootcamp course, which is on Udemy, Skillshare, and you can buy it on our website. I'll link everything down below. It literally teaches you how to manage clients perfectly, how to get high quality clients that actually respect you as a service provider, as a designer, as a, as a strategy specialist within the brand development realm. And you know, this is something which has helped tons of other freelancers and designers, and I'm sure it can help you as well. And listen, I do not care about being paid for the courses. I don't make them for that. I literally sell them so that we can reinvest everything back into the Lancaster Academy ecosystem and make more courses so that I can help designers, freelancers to get better work, better clients, and you know, enjoy their work you know, more. That's why we actually do design, right? Because we love what we do. So if you can't afford the course for any reason, then let me know in the comments, just pop your email address in the comments and I'll send you a free link. Not a problem at all. But anyway, thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it. I hope you enjoyed the story. I hope you enjoyed my pain, basically, and I will see you in the next video. Take care.